Hey y'all, it's your girl Paris. Um, as I don't remember if I promised this or not, but I wanted to show off my bird, uh, Jenny. Jenny, if you could look this way. Hi. Um, she's a little camera shy. Um, probably because she's like, I don't know what you're doing. Um, and I'm doing a lot of body movements and stuff, so she kind of just has to stick around and stick her tail feathers in my face and everything. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually wearing my my bird t-shirt, and yeah, so she's just gonna stick with me. Um, hopefully she's good and doesn't attack my earrings again, which she was doing about five minutes ago. She was just like, yink, 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 and I'm like, no, stop it. Um, so, I will try to be less animated for her sake. Um, anyways, this is my one week update on hormone replacement therapy and oh boy, have there been a lot of changes, but not physically. Um, actually on the whole changes part of thing, like every morning I wake up and I'm like, are there changes yet? Are there changes yet? And I'm like feeling myself and like touching everywhere and it's like, no, I feel the same. Um, with some minor exceptions, um, I have noticed that, like, my chest area feels a little softer now. Um, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, kind of hard to say, though, if that's not just bodies being bodies. Um, let's see, what else has there been? Um... So, I have noticed a large decrease in my appetite on hormones. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird because my brain tells me, you're hungry, you should be eating this amount of food. And then my body will be like, well, you're not really that hungry, why don't we just like not eat lunch today? That sounds good. And then suddenly hunger will hit me and I'm like, Oh my god, I am so hungry, and I eat way too much food, so, um, I have lost a little bit of weight, but I've also been losing weight for a while now, just eating healthier, and picking my own foods, and cooking for myself, not eating out as much, um, so I've been losing weight for a good while now, and hopefully that continues. However, I have noticed a large decrease in overall appetite on hormones. Um, I'll keep you updated on that, whether or not that changes. That could just be my body going through, you know, complete hormone replacement, and it's just like, what do we do about this? So, I guess it is what it is. Um, let's see. The biggest changes I've noticed so far are mental. Um, I've just been feeling a lot better lately. A lot less depression, a lot less anxiety, um, this overall sense of peace that I am going to become someone I want to be. And it feels a lot less scary like, I don't have to constantly worry and fear whether or not um, I'm going to keep growing chest hair or facial hair, whatever. Hmm, excuse me. So, that's been good. I've been feeling a lot better mentally. And it's like every day I wake up and I'm like, I can be who I want to be because no one can hold me back. And... I guess it goes to show that, you know, when you're experiencing gender dysphoria, it really affects you in a lot of ways that are hard to comprehend, but easier to see once you're getting out of them. So I've been feeling pretty good lately, um, been pretty happy, uh, so good. Um, I still have a lot of struggles. You know, I don't 
look super feminine. Um, and even when I'm at work, I have some people who call me sir and some people who call me ma'am. And it's always kind of weird when they call me sir, especially. Because it's like, can't, can't you see I'm not trying to present as a man? I have false eyelashes on, I have lipstick on. Oh, they can't see that under a mask, though. I have eyeliner on. I have a bra that makes it look like I have at least something there. So, it's kind of weird, um, so, half of them call me sir, half of them call me ma'am, um, although depending on what I wear, and I've noticed this a lot lately, depending on what I wear, the ratio of sir to ma'am can kind of change, so if I'm like wearing a t-shirt, you know, it'll kind of be more 50-50, excuse me? She's not happy that I'm doing hand motions. Um, anyways, as I was saying, so depending on what I'm wearing, um, the ratio can be like 50-50 sort of man if I'm wearing just like a t-shirt and jeans. However, if I'm wearing my short-sleeved flannel button-up, you'll notice that like the sirs start to drop and the ma'ams start to increase. So, I, I guess that shirt makes me look more like a woman. Um, I didn't really think of it that way when I got it. I just kind of thought, oh, this is a nice shirt. I like it. So, I don't know what to say about that. But it is something I've noticed. And that whole thought leads me into another thought that I've been having throughout the week of how your femininity as a woman is so often tied to stuff. And I'm not just talking about like makeup and jewelry and clothing, but also this whole idea that women are consumers and culture is designed to feed into the consumption of women. So this whole idea of to express your femininity, you must buy things. And I've certainly been a victim of this, and this is probably not a good way to talk about this because I may or may not have spent $75 on a pair of thigh-high boots and a short skirt, um, which are coming in the mail. You'll probably see them next week because I really want to show them off. They're so freaking cute! Ah, oh, it kills me. But at the same time, it feeds into the women consumer culture. I don't really know. I don't really have an answer for all these thoughts I've been having. You know, is the answer don't buy or buy less and have people perceive you as less feminine, which can be anxiety uh, inducing for someone like me. Uh, or is the answer to just find your peace with that and only spend as much money as you can afford. But then that fits into whole ideas of elitist femininity and how um, how attractive you are is directly correlated to how much money you have to spend on your appearance. So a lot of interesting thoughts in that category. I guess I'll give you an update next week if I have more. Um, besides that, I... I'm going into a very stressful week. Next week is the week before finals for my college classes. And then the week after that is finals and it's going to absolutely suck and I hate it. And then the worst part, I go home for Christmas. Um, so I guess now would be a good time to talk about my family situation, I guess. Um, it's not great. They don't, okay, so I've come out to my parents, especially my parents, before, and it's never gone well. Um, let's just say there is a reason why I'm paying for my own college bill. And even though they have the money to pay off my college bill, 
they don't want to. Um, yeah, it's kind of tricky. My mother especially is very transphobic and she's just liberal enough to not, I don't want to say this in a mean way, she's just liberal enough to not disown me, but also super conservative enough to yell at me, scream at me, um, has been physical before, uh, has thrown things at me before, just for trying to express my feminine side, and yeah, it's, it's never been good, um, so. I am not out to them right now, so I'll be going home and pretending to be a guy again for a couple weeks or winter break. Oh, it's gonna be fun. Um, so I'll probably record a couple videos before that just to you know, give you updates. I'm gonna do little text updates. We'll see how it goes. It won't be too long. Um, yeah, but have a lot of interesting stories to say the least when I come back. I am out to a few of my siblings, particularly my older sister. Um, I am the youngest of five born kids. Then we also have two long-term exchange students who spend a lot of time with us. And I'm the youngest of all the natural born. And then there's an exchange student who's, I call him semi-permanent, um, who's older than me and then one who's younger than me. Um, I'm out to the exchange student who's older than me and my sister who's older than me, um, but that's about it. And they're supportive, they're good, um, but it does certainly make the family dynamic weird because it's like, I don't want my situation to make their relationship with my mother harder and that's certainly tricky especially when she goes off and kind of loses it sometimes and it can make things very difficult so um but after winter break when I come back I plan on getting my ears pierced. Uh, these earrings are just clip-ons, which is helpful for this little bugger because when she tries to pull them off, they come off without hurting that much. Um, so I plan on getting my ears pierced after Christmas. It will. I've heard that it hurts really badly, so I'm not looking forward to that because I hate pain. However, I love beauty. And sometimes beauty is also pain and expensive. So we'll see. Um, and after Christmas will be a couple weeks and changes may or may not start to be noticeable at that point. Um, they say that some changes can start around a month up to about three months is when they can start. So we'll see. Um, I have this whole feeling that, like my body is taking super well to the hormone replacement therapy. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it feels like it's taking it very well. Um, I certainly, certainly feels like my skin is softer and that, you know, it could just be my imagination because I'm so excited. Um, and yeah. I've made a couple of trans friends recently um, who were also trans women, also starting hormones around this time. So it'll be nice to talk to them some more and um, do some feminine things together and hang out. And I love the time I've spent with them because like I can be myself and they won't judge me. So. It's really nice, and I love it. So, that's been my first week on hormones. It's been good. Um, no 
Oh, there is one story. Uh, one time I was at work, I forgot to take um, some pills with me, and my work shifts are from, well, this was on a Thursday, so it was from 4 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m., and I forgot to take my testosterone blocker and estrogen pill with me, and you normally take those around dinner time, and I certainly <laughs> did not feel happy when I missed my dosage. Um, I took them when I got home, which was around midnight, well, around uh, 11, 11.30ish, um, but I remember the whole night I was just like, I want to punch someone, I want to punch someone, I want to punch someone. <laughs> I didn't, and it was very nice to everyone. Uh, it was also just a very stressful night just in general. So, actually, no, that was Friday, meaning that I worked from 2.30 to 11 o'clock p.m. And it was a, a schedule, it was a shift that I was not normally scheduled for. My boss didn't mention it. I was super upset because I had a date planned for that night and I had to cancel and I was like, ah. And then I also missed it and I was like, ah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was interesting. But I kept my cool the whole night. I got home, went to bed, and it was fine. And I guess that's about it. Um, I really should start writing down all the things I want to talk about during the week. Because it's like every day I'm like, ooh, I should talk about this. Ooh, I should talk about that. <laughs> so I'll try to remember to start writing things down. Anyways, that's about it for week number one. And I guess... I'll see you next week, or you'll see me next week, or however this YouTube thing works. Um, as always, I'm Paris. This is Jenny, um, who is being good. Um, this is my life, and thanks for sticking along for the ride. Anyways, I love you very much. Stay safe, be kind to people, even when they don't deserve it. And I love you.